April 13, 2029, a date marked by astronomers not for destruction, but for one of the greatest live space shows on Earth. Apophis will be so close, you could point at it from your backyard. But here's the bigger surprise. NASA's Osiris Apex spacecraft will be there too, meeting the asteroid as it swings by us. It's not just sightseeing. This flyby will push our planetary defense strategies forward. But what exactly will scientists be testing as they race alongside a half a kilometer rock sprinting past Earth? from doomsday rock to scientific jackpot. Back in 2004, the story broke fast. A newly found asteroid appeared to have a real chance of hitting Earth. The name was Apophis, and the early computer models gave it an estimated 2.7% impact probability in 2029. That may not sound huge, but in asteroid terms, it was unusually high, and it pushed Apophis right to the top of global risk lists. Those first numbers came from only a few nights of observations. The less data you have, the wider the range of possible paths an asteroid might take. And in this case, one of those paths passed straight through our planet. The fear grew when scientists noticed something in the math. If if Apophis didn't hit Earth in 2029, it might still pass through what's called a gravitational keyhole. This is not a physical object, but a small region of space where an asteroid's trajectory could be tweaked just enough by Earth's gravity to send it onto a collision course years later. For Apophis, the keyhole linked to a potential 2036 impact. The catch? This bullseye was only hundreds of meters across, floating in a vast spread of empty space. It was like asking if a thrown pebble would travel through a coin-sized ring dangling mid-air thousands of kilometers away. Possible, but extremely precise. Still, that slim chance couldn't be ignored. The uncertainty demanded action. To shrink the error margins, astronomers needed many more precise measurements of Apophis's position over time. That meant turning the asteroid into one of the most closely watched objects in the sky. Within weeks of the announcement, observatories around the world began calculating times to catch it as it crossed their night skies, and researchers pooled what they saw into shared databases. Between 2000 and 2013, Apophis spent years under steady surveillance. Telescopes in both hemispheres logged countless observations, each one fine-tuning its orbit a little bit more. Radar facilities also played a crucial role, bouncing signals off the asteroid whenever it was close enough. These radio echoes could pinpoint its location and speed far more accurately than optical images alone. Piece by piece, what was once a hazy prediction became a well-defined map of its journey. By 2013, the picture was sharp enough to cross two major risks off the chart completely. There would be no impact in 2029 and the feared 2036 scenario was gone as well. That conclusion wasn't instant. It took almost a decade of measuring tiny shifts in position, rerunning orbital simulations, and double-checking every factor that could bend the asteroid's path. At this point, researchers could say with confidence that Apophis posed no danger for at least the next century. This wasn't luck. It was the result of applying the full range of observational tools to one problem and keeping them trained on it for years. Every extra data point sliced away uncertainty, like a sculptor carving down to the final form. The fascinating part is that even with all this tracking, the fine details weren't easy to nail down at the start, because space isn't empty in terms of forces. An asteroid's route can be adjusted by subtle nudges, some of them almost invisible, that slowly accumulate over decades. Astrophysicists have to weigh many of these very variables in every model. Some are obvious, like gravitational pulls from planets and moons. Others are far more delicate.
delicate, like the way sunlight can heat one side of a rotating asteroid and cause it to emit infrared radiation unevenly, giving it a tiny push. That's not science fiction. It's a measurable effect, and it can make the difference between safe distance and planetary hazard many orbits later. So, Apophis transformed from a potential doomsday rock into what scientists now call a jackpot opportunity. That shift didn't happen because the asteroid changed course suddenly, but because we learned exactly where it was headed and why, which leads to the next puzzle. If gravity alone can't explain all those early doubts, what was the hidden force making its future so hard to pin down? The subtle push you can't see. Yarkovsky effect explained. Imagine sunlight slowly nudging a rock through space. A push so gentle you'd never notice it from one day to the next. Yet over decades, that quiet shove can shift an asteroid's path by thousands of kilometers. This is the Yarkovsky effect. And for scientists studying Apophis, it turned out to be one of the trickiest variables to measure. When the asteroid was first tracked, Gravity from the sun and planets explained much of its motion, but some tiny, persistent force was still unaccounted for, and without it, the math didn't quite add up. At its simplest, the Yarkovsky effect is about heat. When sunlight strikes an asteroid, its surface absorbs energy and warms up. Hours later, as the asteroid rotates, those heated areas cool off and release energy back into space as infrared radiation. That release isn't perfectly symmetrical. It creates a faint recoil, a push so weak you might think it's meaningless. For small bodies like Apophis, though, even this whisper of force matters. Over many orbits, it can make the asteroid arrive at a given point in space earlier or later than predicted. And that's exactly the kind of change that can decide whether close pass becomes direct hit. Think of it like a beach ball spinning under the sun at the pool. One side warms and the surrounding air expands ever so slightly, nudging it in the water. The push is minimal, almost laughably small. But if the ball spins all afternoon, it will drift to a different spot than you expected. In space, there's no water or air. But the principle is very similar. The spin rate, the tilt of the rotation axis, and even the size of pebbles on the surface can control how that thermal push works. That's part of what made Apophis challenging early on. Astronomers didn't know its exact spin or how its shape might be redistributing heat. The asteroid isn't a perfect sphere. It has slopes, ridges, and irregularities. Each of those features changes how light is absorbed and released. On top of that, surface dust and rock have different temperatures at different times. So, even local variations can influence the effect. Without precise measurements, predictions about its location decades into the future could be off by alarming amounts. This is where high-precision radar came in. Facilities like the Goldstone Deep Space Communications Complex in California and the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia worked together as a radar imaging team. They aimed powerful radio waves at Apophis during its closer approaches and then listened for the echoes bouncing back from its surface. These echoes gave the most accurate position and velocity data possible from Earth, while telescopes tracking it visually could place it within hundreds of meters radar could shrink that uncertainty to within a handful of meters. With radar data, scientists could finally start to see, in the numbers, the fingerprint of the Yarkovsky effect. They compared Apophis's actual position against where it would have been if gravity were the only influence. The difference between the two revealed how strong that thermal push really was. It's almost counterintuitive that something driven by sunlight could weigh in so heavily on long-term forecasts. But once it was measured, predictions for Apophis's future path became far more stable. Ignoring this 
effect would have been risky. Over decades, calculations could have drifted by enough to miss or overstate an impact risk entirely. When the margin for error could be the size of a planet, those tiny pushes matter. That's why any asteroid with a potential Earth encounter in the next century gets the Yarkovsky question asked early. How much is the sun nudging it, and in which direction? In Apophis's case, pinning that down was the final piece needed to remove it from watch lists. From then on, the models no longer had to build in massive uncertainty ranges. The orbit was locked down with a level of confidence impossible before, and mission planners could think about 2029 in practical terms. Instead of treating the flyby like a potential crisis, they could map a mission to meet the asteroid head-on. That shift in attitude comes from precision, and that precision comes from knowing every meaningful force at play, even ones as faint as heat radiating off an ancient rock. And now, with its path understood to a degree that seemed unreachable in 2004, we're in a rare position. We can watch the largest close pass of this century not with unease, but as a planned study of how a massive asteroid moves when our planet's gravity takes hold, the 2029 encounter closer than satellites. On April 13th, 2029, Apophis will pass only about 31,000 kilometers from Earth's surface. That's closer than the geostationary satellites that handle weather monitoring and communications. It's not zooming by in the vague distance. It will glide through a region of space that normally only human-made machines occupy. Because it's large, roughly 370 meters across, it won't need a telescope to spot. Under clear skies, people in certain parts of the world will see it as a moving point of light, bright enough to catch with the naked eye. Its flyby path is already charted in detail. Apophis will first become visible in the night over the southern Atlantic, then sweep eastward. Europe, most of Africa, and parts of Western Asia will have the best seats for the show. In those regions, it will shift across the stars quickly enough that you can notice its motion in minutes, not hours. Observers along the track will likely see it at a brightness similar to modern moderately bright stars, meaning you could step outside and point it out just like you would the planet Mars when it's close. For many, the experience will be like seeing a satellite pass overhead, except this satellite is made of rock and has been traveling through space for billions of years. The timing will be precise. Earth rotates beneath Apophis's path, so the window for prime viewing in any one location won't last long. In some places, it will rise above the horizon and then vanish again within an hour, continuing its journey across the globe. Unlike slower-moving deep-sky objects, you won't see it stay fixed in a spot. The motion will be unmistakable, a subtle but constant drift through familiar constellations. We rarely get such a large natural object passing this close without it being part of a meteor shower burning in the atmosphere. This will remain fully intact, sailing past. What makes the event even more important is the interaction you can't see with your eyes. As it swings by, Earth's gravity will twist Apophis's trajectory. The change is small, fractions of a degree in its orbital path. But for scientists, that's the goal thereafter. This kind of gravitational assist, or deflection, is the same principle used to sling space probes toward distant planets. By tracking Apophis before, during, and after the flyby, researchers can measure exactly how our planet's pull alters a massive, fast-moving body in real time. That means we get a rare laboratory experiment on a city-sized asteroid without having to send one into harm's way deliberately. It's a chance to test the models used for planetary defense planning. Models that one day could decide whether an asteroid impact risk needs a push or can be left alone. The 2029 data could confirm how well these calculations match reality when the scales involve millions of tons of rock. NASA plans to take full advantage. Its OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, fresh from collecting samples from the asteroid Bennu, 
has been reassigned to a new role and renamed Osiris Apex, short for Apophis Explorer. Instead of shutting down after its original mission, it will chase Apophis, arrive after the close pass, and match its orbit. From there, it will study the asteroid up close for over a year. That means mapping every feature of the surface in detail, using onboard spectrometers to identify minerals and watching for any changes caused by Earth's tidal forces during the flyby. One focus will be on seismic shaking. As gravity tugs on Apophis, it could cause landslides or shifts in loose material on its surface. Osiris Apex could capture these changes, giving direct evidence of how a large asteroid responds to planetary flybys. Another focus will be measuring its density and internal structure more precisely, key information for any hypothetical deflection attempt. Even the asteroid spin might change slightly, a detail the spacecraft instruments can detect. So, the 2029 encounter won't just be a sky-watching moment. It will be the largest, closest known asteroid pass in modern history, combined with a live, targeted science mission. While the public looks up to watch a slow-moving star pass overhead, teams of researchers will be collecting the most detailed set of before and after data we've ever had for an object of this size. Moments like this don't happen often, and when they do, they tend to reshape how we think about asteroid hazards, from distant threats to tangible neighbors that can be measured, understood, and planned for. Apophis's path from a possible impact threat to a predictable, harmless pass shows how careful measurement can replace fear with understanding. Each radar echo, each observation, built a picture clear enough to erase the risk for a century. That's why April 2029 isn't a warning. It's an open-air experiment in planetary defense you can witness yourself. When the night comes, you'll know exactly what you're seeing and why it matters. Subscribe to follow the Osiris Apex mission and other close encounters. So when space sends another visitor our way, you'll already understand the science unfolding above your head.